let's consider a question. For which values of n can we subdivide an equilateral triangle into n subtriangles where each subtriangle is also equilateral? Of course it's possible for one triangle as shown here, but you can also do it with four triangles as shown here. As another example, this is decomposing the triangle into six sub-equilateral triangles. They don't all have to be the same size. Here's one where we've decomposed the triangle into nine sub-triangles. And here's an example where we have 17 sub-triangles. And here's a final example where we have 29 triangles. Can we show that eventually all values of n are possible? How can we do this? Will proof by induction work? For instance, can you see how you could get a tiling of size 5 from this pictured tiling of size 4? One way to tackle this tiling problem is to consider an alternative to induction called strong induction. Recall that the principle of mathematical induction is a mathematical technique that can be used to prove universal statements of the form for all n greater than or equal to n0, p of n, where p of x is a predicate. To perform proof by mathematical induction, we broke our theorem into two different cases, the base case and the induction step. The base case is a single proposition, and the induction step is a universal conditional statement. The process of strong induction is similar, but it utilizes a modified conditional statement. In particular, given a fixed value of n, we assume that all the propositions up to n, but not including n, are true. And we use this assumption to prove that p of n is true. This is what the modified logical statement looks like. The new change is that the hypothesis of the conditional statement now remembers that p of k is true for all k between n0 and n. The process of regular induction assumed that the predicate was true for one value of n and used that assumption to show that it was true for the next value of n. Strong induction makes a stronger assumption that the predicate is true for all the values between the base case and the n value we care about and uses that assumption to prove that the predicate holds for the n value we're interested in. Another caveat is that the proof might this time require multiple base cases, so we might first have to verify that a few of the first instances are true and we don't know exactly how many base cases there are, it will depend on the problem. Let's investigate a theorem that will give us intuition for how to use the proof by strong induction compared to induction. As we already noted, induction remembers one immediately previous predicate to be true, while strong induction remembers all of the previous predicates to be proven true. So let's use this to prove the following theorem. Let's see that every integer greater than one can be written as the product of primes. Here we have already written out the numbers with their prime factorizations, but let's pretend that we don't already know them. For example, consider the number 36. If we are using induction, we only have knowledge of the previous value, that 35 is equal to 5 times 7, but this doesn't give us any information about the prime factorization of 36. Instead, strong induction helps us remember all of the previous prime factorizations, and we see that because 36 is 4 times 9, we get the prime factorization for 36 as the prime factorization of 4 multiplied by the prime factorization of 9. Let's solidify this with one more example. Notice that the number before 48 is 47, which is prime, and so has no influence on the prime factorization of 48. But if we remember that 48 is 16 times 3, then we see that 48's prime factorization can be obtained by remembering the prime factorizations for 16 and the prime factorization for 3. These examples inform our general strategy for proof by strong induction. For our base case, we let n equal 2, which is prime, so 2 equals 2 shows that 2 can be written as the product of 1 prime. For our induction step, we first imagine that n is a given fixed natural number greater than or equal to 2. Next, we assume that every k with 1 less than k less than n can be written as the product of primes. Now we consider two cases for n. First of all, if n is prime, then n equals n shows n written as a product of 1 prime. In the case that n is not prime, then n equals a times b, where a and b are integers between 1 and n. But by assumption, both a and b can then be written as the product of primes, as we see here. This means that a equals p1 times p2 up to pk, where they're primes, and b equals q1 times q2 up to ql, where those are primes. But this means that n, which is a times b, is equal to p1 up to pk, 
multiplied by q1 up to ql. This means that n can be written as the product of primes. Because we proved a base case and an induction step, we have proved the theorem by strong induction. Now let's use strong induction to revisit the tiling problem from the beginning of this video. It turns out that the theorem we want to prove is that an equilateral triangle can be subdivided into n subtriangles that are all equilateral for every integer n greater than 5. For this problem, there are three base cases, when n equals 6 is pictured here, when n equals 7 is pictured here, and when n equals 8 is pictured here. For the induction step, we first let n be a fixed natural number greater than or equal to 9. Now we assume that the equilateral triangle can be subdivided into k equilateral subtriangles for every value of k with 6 less than or equal to k less than n. Because 6 is less than or equal to n minus 3 is less than n, the triangle can be subdivided into n minus 3 equilateral triangles by assumption. Now let's explore the trick. If we have a tiling of the equilateral triangle into n minus 3 triangles, we can then focus on one of those equilateral triangles, and we can replace that single equilateral triangle with a tiling of the equilateral triangle into four equilateral subtriangles. Since we replaced one triangle with four, we've added three new triangles, and therefore we have a tiling of the equilateral triangle into n equilateral subtriangles. The theorem thus holds by the principle of strong induction. The idea is that we can start with any of the three base cases and repetitively replace one equilateral triangle with the equilateral triangle that has been tiled with four triangles, and this will eventually get us to any number that we want. Let's end this video with a challenge problem known as the Chicken McNugget problem. The classic sizes of Chicken McNuggets that were sold at McDonald's were those of size 6, 9, and 20 pieces. So we can think of a 6-piece McNugget as 6 blocks. We can think of a 9-piece Nugget as 9 blocks. And we can think of a 20-piece Nugget as 20 blocks, as pictured here. From this, a natural question is how many chicken nuggets you can buy exactly using these denominations. It turns out that you can prove that you can buy exactly n chicken McNuggets for all n greater than 43. You should be able to show that you cannot buy exactly 43 chicken McNuggets. Here are a couple of examples for different values of n that you can buy. If you take one 20-piece chicken McNuggets and two different 9-piece chicken McNuggets, along with a 6-piece chicken McNuggets, then you have purchased exactly 44 chicken nuggets. Similarly, if you buy a 20-piece chicken McNugget, and then another 20-piece chicken McNugget, and finally a 6-piece chicken McNugget, then you have purchased exactly 46 chicken McNuggets. As you try to prove this theorem, I'll give you a hint that there are six base cases to consider. Can you see why six base cases will be enough? Here's another hint. Based on what I've shown you already, can you see how to get 50 or 52 piece chicken McNuggets exactly without much work?